Hey everybody, my name is Mike Montgomery and today I'd like to show you how to turn an attic like this into a home theater like this on Modern Builds. When LG reached out about sponsoring an episode of Modern Builds to promote their new laser 4K projector, the LG Cinebeam, I told them I had the perfect project. My dad has wanted to convert this space into a home theater for well over a decade. And since Father's Day is right around the corner, I think it's perfect timing to get that done for him. The LG Cinebeam is not your average projector. On top of having an amazing picture and being incredibly bright, it's designed to be portable all around your house. All the way from projecting onto a blank wall, like what we're doing in this theater room, to projecting on the ceiling above your bed. It's lightweight, convenient to carry, and even has a built-in cord reel. How cool is that? I'll be giving you guys a proper rundown. Hey, dude, do you know what a rundown is? On this projector a little later on in this video, but right now I just wanted to give a big thanks to LG for making this whole project possible. And now let's get this project started. Welcome to my parents' attic where it has looked about like this for the past 15 years since they built the house that I grew up in. Of course, attics come in all shapes and sizes, but I think this is pretty common built into the roof line of your house. That's why we have this half wall running the full length of the space in this pitch to the roof. But it's a great size room. It's about 24 feet long and 14 feet wide, separated into three platforms that gradually get lower for more headroom. And so now that we've got all that covered, let me catch you up to speed with what we've already done. Yesterday, myself along with a friend Andy, who's a certified electrician, roughed in all of the electrical. I started out by putting a box everywhere we either wanted an outlet or a plug. These just nail onto the sides of the stud really easily. Then I drilled holes in the studs all the way around the room so that we could feed wire from each of those boxes. In this room, we've got one circuit dedicated to the outlets and a second circuit dedicated to all of the lighting. As Andy fed the Romex from one box to another, he was sure to leave about a 12 to 18 inch lead coming out of each box. That way there was plenty of wire to work with whenever it was time to wire the outlets and switches. Installing the canes for the recessed lighting wasn't tough either. It was just a little annoying having insulation in the way while I was trying to work. I'll leave the ones that I used linked below. They're IC rated and airtight, meaning they can come in direct contact with insulation without being a fire hazard. It's also nice that they're adjustable. They can slide to be centered on the rafters. And tomorrow I've got a crew coming to get all of the drywalling done. Of course, drywalling is something that you can DIY, but this room has a lot of angles and I am not that great of a drywaller. I've only ever done drywall repair work and I know that I would take a long time to get this room done. I'm on a tight timeline and I want a good quality finish, so I think this is where it's worth it to call in the professionals. I was really surprised to see how these guys hung this drywall. No special tools or equipment, they just used their head to hold the drywall up and a hammer and nails to hang the actual drywall. After all the panels were installed, they came back to reinforce all of the corners with what's called corner bead, and this is just pin nailed in. After that, they mixed up a lot of joint compound and taped and mudded all of the seams. It was awesome getting to see the different trowels and tools that they use to get different profiles, like this bull nose that they use to round over all of the inside corners. Overall, this job took them three days. I couldn't imagine how long this would have taken if I would have tried it myself. Now, funny enough, I didn't have the drywallers cover up the window in the attic. At the time, we weren't sure if we wanted to project directly onto the wall or have one of those pull down screens. But after looking at Pinterest and seeing a lot of reference images, directly projecting was definitely the way I wanted to go. So I hung a piece of drywall over that window, got some joint compound and taped and mudded the patch. After applying a liberal amount of joint compound to fill all of the voids in the seams, I used tape to help strengthen the joint between the existing pieces of drywall. Using the putty knife to sink the tape into the mud and help smooth everything out really reduced the amount of sanding that I'd have to do between coats. And since this is the wall that I'm gonna be projecting onto, I'm about to do what's called a skim coat to smooth everything out. Between the texture that the drywallers put on the wall and the patch over the window, this is not a good surface to project onto. The first thing that I did was grab this nine inch drywall sander from Gator, load it up with some sandpaper and knock down that texture that had already been applied. Now I wasn't trying to get this perfectly smooth, I just wanted to get those high points taken care of. 
After that, I got some more joint compound, but this time I watered it down. That way it would be easier to apply with a paint roller. The consistency of drywall mud is something like smooth peanut butter. I wanted to water it down until it was more like yogurt. I used a high nap roller because I was going for volume here. I wanted a really thick first coat because I'm gonna be sanding everything down afterwards. What I found on this first coat was that the joint compound dries really fast, even when it's watered down. So I only did about a quarter of the wall, then I came back with a drywall knife and smoothed everything out. Then I repeated those steps three more times until I had the whole projector wall finished. Whenever you're using the drywall knife, you want to make sure and have a really soft touch. We're not trying to dig into the drywall compound, more float on top of it, just to knock down any of the raised areas and minimize the sanding we'll have to do afterwards. I used the same drywall sander as earlier, with a little bit less pressure this time, and with 150 grit sandpaper instead of 120. Now I've seen people do multiple skim coats, but after this first coat was on, it looked really smooth, so I decided just to go back and spot check any areas that needed fixed. I used my large drywall knife so I'd have the biggest reference surface as possible, and I filled in any voids before I sanded that down one last time. And I should probably get ahead of the comments and explain why I'm painting this room white since it is going to be a home theater. And the reason for that is I like it and it looks good in photos. That's it. The projector wall on the other hand is going to be painted with bare silver screen. I looked at a lot of home theater and AV forums online and I found that this is what a lot of people have used with good results for painting projector walls. I applied three coats with a high density foam roller to get a good smooth finish. Now that this paint is dry on the projector wall, I've gotta test this thing out. I gotta see how well this skim coat worked. After a few weeks of work and little sleep, it was awesome to see how good this projector wall looks. Definitely better than a rollout screen. Pretty impressive, right? This is the LG 4K Cinebeam projector and it just might be the coolest projector I have ever seen. Holy cow, do you see how good this is? This is only 100 or so inches. This thing can get all the way up to 150. And in case you're curious just how big a 150 inch screen looks, I'm about to show you. Internally, the super compact I-shaped engine and cooling system allows for a much smaller footprint, about half the size of traditional 4K projectors. And this projector is built to be portable, completely plug and play. It's easy to scale your image and focus no matter where you're at in the house. All you have to do is place your projector opposing the wall you want to project onto, raise the mirror, and you're ready to go. You can have it standing up for a classic design, or you can even lay it over so that it can project in a more compact area. And the LG Cinebeam is capable of automatically keystoning your image to make sure it projects square onto your wall. The Magic Remote is incredibly convenient, no more pressing buttons, all you have to do is point and click at what you want to select. So that's all on this projector for now, but stay tuned so that you can see this thing in action during the big reveal. Let's keep this project moving. So we are at a fun part of this project. I'm about to tackle the facer boards for each of these risers. The first one is about six inches tall, the second one being closer to 12. And both of these runs are right around 14 feet long, so I'm gonna be splicing them right down the center of the room. After using a speed square to mark out the intervals for each one of my relief cuts that I wanted to make, I got my Craig track saw set up and I set the depth of the blade about an eighth of an inch. I'm not cutting through the boards, I'm just making a texture with these relief cuts. Towards the base of this footboard, the relief cuts are only spaced out about a quarter of an inch, but as I get higher up on the board, I space them out further, almost for a sunburst effect. This is reminiscent of the DIY coffee table that I built while I was at my friend Chris Salamone's shop. If you haven't seen that video, the card is in the corner. This whole process could easily be replicated with a straight edge and a circular saw, even a DIY track saw like I've made in the past. But I have a track saw now, so can you blame me for using it? Installing these boards wasn't tough. After marking and cutting each piece to length, I used some Gorilla heavy duty construction adhesive along with my Ryobi 16 gauge brad nailer to attach them to the existing footers. 
Now, if I'm being honest here, I made a little bit of a mistake. In hindsight, I should have installed all of the flooring and then these spacer boards on top, almost like trim. But hey, I'm not a pro, I'm relatively new to the game, and these mistakes are gonna happen. But it's important to learn from them and not repeat them. I guess the other important thing is that they look good, and that's why I used Maker Brand Simple Finish. Man, that was a good segue. If you don't know about Simple Finish already, it's from my company Maker Brand Co. And if you're interested in learning more, I'll leave a link down in the description. But now, it's carpet time, and these are tack strips. They're basically pieces of wood with angled nails pointing towards the wall. The carpet will go over these nails when it's installed, and this is what grabs onto it and holds it in place. I left about a half inch reveal from the drywall to the tack strips, just enough room for the carpet to get tucked under the trim. After I had gone around the perimeter of both of the landings that I wanted to be carpeted, I got the shop vac out and I cleaned up the OSB subfloor underneath before installing the carpet pad. This isn't a precision game and it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. The pad just needs to set on the inside of the tack strip perimeter. And I'm gonna guess there's about a 99% chance that you're gonna have to cut your carpet pad to width also. And so anywhere that there's seams, you're gonna wanna mask off with masking tape before moving on. I don't know if anyone knows the name of this tool. I'm calling it a slap stapler. It makes sense, right? I found myself being happy again that I was installing this on OSB instead of some sort of concrete where I'd have to use adhesive. This meant that I could move right on to installing the actual carpet. If I could get it upstairs. Rolling out the carpet was similar to the pad, except this time, I didn't cut it to size immediately. In case you don't know already, I am completely new to carpet installation. This is gonna be my first try. And I went by Home Depot and I picked up this. It is a carpet kicker. Now what this is for is to grab onto the carpet and work it into the tack strip. You use this to push the carpet and stretch it across the room. The tool has these retractable teeth that grip onto the carpet and push it over the tack strip, working it into place. Moving a piece of carpet this big once it's rolled out is not easy. In fact, the kicker only scoots the carpet around about an eighth of an inch per kick, but that's just enough to work it over the tack strip so that it can grab onto those angled nails pointing towards the wall that we highlighted earlier. I started kicking the carpet in place along one of the long walls before I moved to an adjacent short wall. After that, I pushed all of the excess carpet to the opposing short wall and kicked that side into place. It's funny, I wasn't expecting this to be such a core workout or for the tops of my knees to be completely bruised the next day. I probably should have worn knee pads in hindsight. Holy cow. If you ever find yourself doing carpet work, make sure and pick up a carpet knife. It's got a double-sided blade that does a good job of staying sharp against a material that would normally dull out a utility knife quickly. What you're seeing me do here is exactly why I should have installed those plywood facer boards after the flooring. I'm using the carpet tucker as a guide for my drywall knife to make sure that I cut my carpet with a little bit to spare. This is gonna allow me to tuck it into that facer board just enough so that there's no gaps or seams. You'll see me install baseboard trim later and that's how I would have installed those facer boards. There is one length of carpet that I didn't want to use tack strip on, for obvious reasons. So I used my 16 gauge finish nailer after stretching the carpet out to hold it all in place along the edge. These flat panel doors aren't exactly ugly. If I would have just painted them and replaced the hardware, they would have looked great in the new space. But I thought, if I'm already going through the work of painting these doors, I should add some sort of texture or pattern. And because that wasn't the quickest or easiest thing to explain, I made a whole separate video on this process. It'll be linked down in the description. After you finish this video, head down there and check it out.
you'll also find the link for this flooring video. You wanna talk about something that's even more complicated to explain, it's this. But it's the coolest project that I've done in quite a while. I got half inch birch plywood and cut it into parallelograms. Because I made all four sides proportional, they assembled to create a repeating, seamless hexagon pattern that looked amazing. If you want to find out more about this project, there's a link for it down in the description. What you see me doing here is installing plywood pieces where I'll eventually be installing a built-in bar and micro kitchen. Doing this just saved a little time and materials on the flooring build, plus they're going to act as risers for the cabinets anyways. I applied four coats of a water-based wood finish, and this should be fine for the light traffic that this room is going to get. While I was applying all of those coats of finish, I was alternating between this and painting the door. This color is called Arrowhead Lake, and it's from Bear. It looks really great, and it's what I use to focus all the other accessories around in the room. This was a really fun project though. The wood that I used to create the pattern only cost about 12 bucks. I sprung for a little bit more expensive hardware, but hey, you may not even have to do that. Before installing any baseboard trim, you need to work on your door casings first. This trim wants to extend all the way to the floor and baseboards just get in the way. Trim, even though it is a lot of measuring and cutting, is my favorite part of the remodel or construction process. It's where everything finally comes together. It's sort of the line between construction and staging. No more saving it for later or ugly exposed seams. Everything starts to get cleaned up and looks finished from here on out. So I know a step like this is not very common and the way that I'm gonna trim it out is definitely not standard, but I've got a really neat idea that I wanna try out. I set my miter saw to 45 degrees and instead of cutting a full miter along this trim, I left a reveal of about half to three quarters of an inch. This is a super simple, plain detail, but that's what I want. I don't want it to stand out. I don't want the trim to detract from those facer boards any. From there, I filled the voids, cleaned the seams, and painted everything that I needed to. Here, I'm making repeated cuts on the table saw to create a groove on these custom pieces of trim for the facer boards. For me, this is the fun part about remodeling, having a background in DIY woodworking. I get to do these small projects that are isolated in this room renovation that don't do anything crazy, but they're small things that catch your eye and go a long way in making a unique space. The pieces of this trim that I cut for the carpet were similar but just a little bit different dimensions. At this moment in time, I was crazy excited. No more trim to install, no more exposed edges or seams, we're on the fast track. I started thinking to myself, this can't be a modern builds video if I don't build a little bit of furniture. So here I'm building a floating console table that the projector is going to shoot above. There's no back to the case of this console, so I was able to slide it over some simple shelf support so that it floated above the floor. I used masking tape to help prevent tear out anywhere that I drilled a hole through the cabinet to access the outlets inside of the case. And LG was nice enough to hook it up with an awesome soundbar and subwoofer that'll be linked in the description. The LG SK10Y brings cinema quality surround sound to your home using Dolby Atmos and Meridian technology. Plus it connects wirelessly and automatically to our LG Cinebeam. I saw these super affordable LED outlet covers on Amazon a while back and I've been thinking about using them for a long time and it wasn't until this project that it was the perfect application. Lights along the stairs just like a real theater. Before I show you the final results, let's go back and look at this attic day one or maybe day three because we had already installed the lighting. It wasn't pretty but it was a great shape. Because it already had risers, it lended itself perfectly to this home theater. Let's check it out. LG 
As you can tell, I stole a few classic modern builds projects from around the house to stage this room out for now, but I plan on building some unique furniture for this space. Right now it's the end of May, a couple weeks until Father's Day, and my dad has not seen this space since I laid down the carpet, so it's changed a lot. I've got this camera set up, that camera set up. I guess it's time for one of those HGTV reveals. Let's get it. Three, two, one, here we go. Holy crap. That is nice. What do you think? I love it. Yeah? Holy crap. You remember what it's it looked a, like before? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is, this is freaking awesome. Right on. I love it. We got Good some job. floors. We got some carpet. That's, that, that's, that's, that's my favorite table you made anyway. Oh, the bowling alley yeah. one? Yeah. yeah, I love that table, so. What, what do you call it? I would call it like a floating console, I guess. Like it, a it, console. It, it looks really good. It's got a couple plugs on the inside too, so any kind of electronics or whatever that need to go in there, uh -huh. it all hides. Sweet. Well, now I get to test out the couch. Now I got a man cave. Yeah, I know it was fun. I can just keep your mom from decorating it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, happy Father's Day. It's Thank a little you. early. But it's okay. All right. It's, uh, it's perfectly okay. <laughs> this is awesome. Cool. I'm glad. So one more huge thanks for checking out this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to watch my door or floor video in this space, make sure and follow the links down in the description. Also, down in the description, you'll find links for the LG 4K Cinebeam projector. And as you can tell, this picture is amazing. If you're not already, you should be following me on Instagram. I've been highlighting this project as I've been building and I am at Modern Builds. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave those below or just hit me up with a DM on Instagram. Thanks again for watching guys and we'll see you next time on Modern Builds. Wow, that's bright.